Greetings YouTube, time for another bargain video. First up we have Dead High Yearbook, a story of a supernatural high school. Uh, the Treasury of the Gun by Harold Peterson. This is from 1962. M.C. Escher um, Kidio Cycles, which are pieces of paper that you fold to create shapes. I thought my wife might, might enjoy that. She is into origami. Um, Lon Po Po, um, a red riding hood story from China. Two different... Uh, paper folding uh, books, which I think are in German, but paper folding is paper folding. I thought my wife, my, my wife might be able to use those with the Girl Scouts. Cleopatra, A Life by Stady Scheif. Um, I've always wanted a decent reference to uh, Cleopatra, and this looks like it might be it. Weaving with reeds and fiber. Again, outdoorsy kind of weaving things that I thought my wife might be able to use. Uh, the, store, the Stranger Next Door. Um, the story of a small community battle over sex, faith, and civil rights. Camp Out, a kid's book about camping. Um, Quest presents Lance Kerrigan of the Galactic Legion. This is uh, a comic I picked up at an antique store for a dollar. Um, I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, but that cover, I'm like, for a buck, I'll, I'll, I'll buy into that one. And... Uh, DC Comics G.I. Combat, Volume 1, The War That Time Forgot. It's got dinosaurs. It also has a story about the unknown soldier, um, and it was three bucks. So that takes care of the paper material I've got, the, the print material. Next up is going to be digital media. Here we have Passengers, a uh, Anne Hathaway uh, film. We have Under the Skin, Scarlett Johansson. I've heard it's an interesting science fiction film. I've never seen it. Here we have the second season of Archer. Cocaine Fiends! They also had Reefer Madness at the same thrift shop. Um, and I got a I got a side-by-side -side shot for my Instagram. I already own e Reefer Madness, so I didn't pick that up. But it didn't have Cocaine Fiends, so there we go. Uh, Easy Virtue, which is a comedy dealing with the marriage of a British... Um, upper crust folk uh, dude with a um, American woman. This is a the Criterion Collection version of The Rock. Um, this has got commentary track, and this is an upgrade for me over my already existing version, of, a copy of the of The Rock. Here we have an upgrade to Blu-ray for Thelma and Louise. It has two commentary tracks, one of which has Susan Sarandon, Sarandon and Gina Davis on it. Looking forward to that. Dom Henley, which is a heist. Uh, Movie, and I like a good heist movie. Casanova with uh, Heath Ledger. Eon Flux, this is an upgrade from DVD to Blu ray and has a commentary track with uh, Charlize Theron, and it was uh, quite good. We have an Eddie Izzard concert, and we've watched the Wembley track. There's also a 40 minute set from another location on this. Um, so that's two concerts essentially in one, which is cool. My wife enjoyed the Wembley. Uh, we both did, but my wife's a major Eddie Izzard or Izzard fan. Um, one for the money, Catherine Heigl in a uh, romantic comedy. Puss in Boots, which was quite cute. Uh, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. I've never seen any of the Charlie's Angels films, so I thought I'd give it a, give it a try. Uh, under the, uh, or the Painted Skin, which is uh, a martial arts film. Um, what is this one? Yeah, Full Moon High, which is a werewolf movie. And I got it for the commentary track. I had seen it many years ago. Um, and the commentary track was quite good. And then we have Hellcats, a Mystery Science Theater 3000 um, uh, episode. I love these things. I watch them on YouTube as well, but I like having the physical copies if I can get them at a good price. We have a bell here which has a nice sound. It's interesting because the the clapper is actually free floating. Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. And I asked an Arabic speaking acquaintance of mine if, if this is Arabic and it is not. He thinks it's Farsi. Um, so I need to look that up to see what it says. I think it may be like no God except for God or something along those lines. 
Um, but it's a nice bell, nice shape, good sound. I thought it was kind of cool. Here we have a set of political dice, and we have both senior and junior Bushes on it, as well as Bill Clinton. So that made me smile. Uh, here we have a upholstery tool. So this is what you use to grab the fabric with it, and then you pull it and hold it in place while you then drive tacks into it to hold it in place permanently. Um, I may never do any upholstery, but it's actually an obscure, relatively expensive tool. And this one has some history on it. It was owned by HN, and I picked it up for a song. And so I appreciate tools that have a history, and they can be useful. It is also kind of cool looking. Um, then we have a cement fish for my wife. She likes fish, and this will go in our garden. And then we have a set of curtains that are made out of actual real life Star Trek fabric. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put these up or not, but I had to own them. They're just, they just made me smile. Um, and he's, in his hand, he's carrying a tricorder unit, um, but it kind of looks like he's carrying a smartphone, which made me smile. Um, on to gear. We have an entire set of billiard balls, which I picked up for 10 bucks. Um, it seems like a pretty good deal to me. I'm sure I'll find something to do with them. I like the solid colors, and the striped ones might be useful for something. Um, I'm sure I could do some weapon builds out of this or use them as cane toppers. Here we have a cast iron owl, which my wife liked, and the teeny little tiny cast iron anvil, which made me smile, which is, this is Taiwanese? Yeah, this is from Taiwan. Um, the person had an entire collection of cast iron bits. Um, I didn't buy most of them, but I thought these were too, too were cute. We have a sapphire rechargeable flashlight. I'm not a huge fan of rechargeable flashlights, but I thought I'd give this a try and see how bright it is. We have a EverReady a keychain flashlight and a Husky keychain flashlight. This one I may actually carry its LED. This one is not. I may just give it a try and probably just give it away after that. Um, and we have a Cobb LED light, which is came with a battery in it because I bought it at a state sale. Never heard of Cobb, so I thought I'd give that a check out too. And we have this figure nine carabiner from Night Eyes. Um, never used one of these but it was like 50 cents and at, at, at an estate sale or yard sale and you know definitely um, worth way more than that. We have two Billings wrenches. Uh, this one a large fixed and this is a small adjustable. This is really solidly built. It really, it's, uh, it's quite interesting and you just use screw this and uh, you can reset it. And I thought it was kind of cool. Um, we have this which is a hook for moving logs when you're doing uh, milling logs into into lumber and this is a hand forged version you can buy these commercially um, the eye is slightly squashed so I'm gonna have to get myself some kind of a tool handle and then customize it to fit but five bucks for a hand forged tool that's a great deal in my opinion then we have some knives this one this one looks completely handmade uh, this one is as well it's a it's a you know an outsider uh, hunting knife um, I need to put some improve the edges on those then we have this which is the Morg knife uh, Morg knife Morg knife sorry Morg knife junior this is the junior model pick that up um, at I think that was at a flea market. Then we have these three knives, which I bought at a yard sale for a song. The person didn't know what they had. This is a queen steel knife, which is like 50 years old. It's in incredibly good shape. This is a Japanese knife. I think I haven't gotten much information on it. And this is a fruit knife out of Japan, which is like one of the original fruit knives that other companies have copied. Um, it's not in perfect condition, but I have an affection for fruit knives. A couple of clamps. These are purpose-built for something, but I think I can modify them to use, be usable on my drill press. Um, a nice tack hammer. This is a wooden Stanley uh, scriber, scribe for you setting a, a distance when you're scribing wood. I don't know if I've ever seen a, a fully wooden Stanley tool before, so I have no idea how old that is. 
Um, here we have uh, stone for sharpening uh, axes, which is in nice condition. It's been used, it's fully impregnated. Um, and the same guy had this, which is a purse. This, this snaps closed, it's full of uh, Allen wrenches, like that. Uh, I bought this because I like the pouch and I can always use some Allen wrenches, but my wife has been looking for individual Allen wrenches and I think the size she needs might be in this. So it would be really, I got it really cheap, like a like dollar for the whole thing. Um, this is real leather. We have a Craftsman adjustable wrench. This may be used as is, or I may modify it for something. Uh, we have this here, which is I purchased for the, the Kubaton, which I, I, I liked, and this key, which I liked. The carabiners will be repurposed, if not donated. Like this big one I'll probably keep. I may just get rid of the rest of them. Um, this is a big carabiner, which I happen to like, and I'll find a purpose for that. Then we have some, some sleigh bells, and they were a good price. Um, I think I might have paid you know, less than 10 bucks for all four of those, and they've got some age to them. I don't know how much age, but they're in nice shape, and they've got a nice sound. Uh, we have this, which is a strange French pair of set of pliers from Brookstone. And I don't know what they're designed to do, but they were a good price. And I'm like, I got to know what the, I got to figure out what these things are. Um, but just being able to hold two things together while you're doing something else could be useful. Uh, this is an exacto locking set of pliers. So you clamp it here and you push this forward and it locks it in place. So it's kind of like a third hand kind of thing because it stays locked. Um, it's obviously, the, the they're not very large, but it's when you're doing with X-Acto things, you're cutting with X-Acto knives and, or things like that, you're dealing with small scales. And I've never, ever heard of a set of X-Acto pliers. Same guy had both of those. Um, then we have a compass, which I just happen to like the, the patina on it. And then we have this, which is a, uh, a bow trigger. A, a, um, so you use this on a, with a bow to pull back the uh, your string and then allows you to just hit that with your thumb and it fires a bow. Um, my wife does archery and I thought she might want to give that a try. Not saying she'd be using it all the time, but it was I got it for a song, so I thought she might want to give it a shot. Okay, up next is more gear. While taking tools out of a box, I forgot I had a cookbook, the Thug Kitchen, which apparently is somewhat problematic because it was using the whole thug vernacular uh, of the you know of vernacular of the street, but it was written by some really white dudes. So my wife was actually glad to see this because I guess it's not easily available any longer. Um, so I guess I did good. <laughs> and Shot's original miscellany. Um, which is a reference book from 2002 or three, I think. Um, and I like miscellaneous little trivia books. The Joby Grip Tight POV Kit for your iPhone, though it was just a grip for your phone. It's Bluetooth capable. I think I may be able to link it up to my phone, but if I can't link it up to my phone, um, I can still use it as a grip for holding my camera to make it easier to take certain kinds of shots. And I got it for a song, so like less than a buck. So I thought I'd give it a try. Here we have some nice opera glasses. So if you need to carry some uh, field glasses, I should. Well, they're kind of, they're, I mean, technically they are opera glasses. And I think these are, let me see, this show in here. Uh, 25 times sports glasses made in Japan. So yeah, so got those for when you're in the field. And the other end of the spectrum, which is a 30 times magnifying set, which today has a, uses this incandescent, but it's a magnifier you can carry in your pocket and it does work. And I picked those up for like a dollar a piece at a, an estate sale. Here we have a, this is a, both a, well, it's kind of a caricature of a weapon of a jeet, but it's also a bottle opener. So it kind of crosses over my wife drinks beer and I love weapons. So there you go. Uh, then we have this, which is for, it's a kind of a, spoke shaved concept and the fact that it does hollows though I don't know the best way to sharpen this thing so I'm going to need to work on figuring that out I've never used one of these but I got it at an estate sale for like a dollar and I love vintage tools uh, now we have three compasses and I, they're not all pointing in the same direction because I think they're sitting on top of a steel bar at the moment from the table but um 
This is just a no-name brand compass, and I'll just have my wife give that to somebody in the Girl Scouts. But this is a Victorinox, and this is a Santo. Um, and these are both, or Santo, and these are both good brands. And one of them comes with an emergency whistle. And you can never go wrong with an emergency whistle. Um, we have a, uh, a hand sickle which is was in, in nice shape, and I like the uh, patina on it. Um, so I will use that as either as a tool directly or maybe in a weapons build, though it is a functional weapon in and of itself. Then we have a bunch of threaded rod, which I got for free. Um, there was a fixture at work which was being thrown out, and all of these were attached to a piece of fiberboard. And I asked one of the BCLs, I said, this is yours, isn't it? He said, no, it's not. Why? I said, well, can I? I want Because I want the rods. And he looked at me and he said, take the rods. Anybody gives you crap about it, send them to me. No one's ever given me crap about it. So I got this for free. Um, and threaded rods are more expensive than three free, particularly when I got nuts and washers to go with it. So yay for me. Um, then we have this small bat. This is a collectible. I'm not going to use it as a collectible. I like the color green, but I'm going to use it in some kind of a weapons build. Um, maybe just adding a weight to it. But since I don't have any affection whatsoever for the, was it Oakland Athletics? Um, I, again, I don't follow any sports, so didn't actually know what A's meant until just A. The A meant until till just now. Um, but I'll probably use that in some kind of a weapons build. Maybe put a, a steel pipe on it um, and make it an impact um, weapon of some variety. And here we have a uh, Brazilian machete. I got this for three bucks at, at an estate sale. Um, I like the overall weight to it. It's got a nice weight and the grip is decent. So I may just sharpen this up and use it as a, actually have my wife use it as a machete because she does more stuff outside than I do um, when it comes to doing, you know, clearing brush. Um, she clears brush at camp. Um, um, so I'm gonna probably sharpen this up and let her try it out next summer and we'll see how that goes. Uh, but for three bucks, this is normally running like 20, so. Worth a shot, right? And we have this gripper, which I just happen to like the design. And I've already used it and it works quite well. Though I am probably going to put tool coat on this and you know, the, the, the rubber handle dipping stuff in here to increase the gripping capacity. Because that will let me be able to grip things more firmly because it will have a, a rubber rubberized coating on it. So I already purchased that so I can dip this in there and then get a a nice coating on it. Um, but I like the design, uh, aluminum shaft, more heavy duty than a lot of the grippers you find out there, which are often plastic. Um, and I picked this up at, at a yard sale, I think it might've been, or an estate sale or something, but again, for like a buck. So again, this is worth a hell of a lot more than a buck. So be careful. But yeah, there's an electrical warning in here because this is aluminum. Don't go grabbing things. Uh, you shouldn't be grabbing with one of these things. And uh, this section right here, the last thing we have for this section is three baseballs, which I picked up for a buck a piece. And I'm thinking of turning these into a set of bolas just for fun, you know, like a post-apocalyptic bola kind of thing. Though I drilling a hole all the way through this without adversely grabbing the windings of the inside may be difficult. So I'm going to have to work on that. I have to figure out a way to hold it down properly so that in the event it begins to come back up on me, I do not end up harming myself or my drill. And I've been working on an idea to do just that. Ready? So uh, there's one more section and it's got, it's a goodie. This is the last section. The first thing we have is this Panavice. Then we have a router attachment for a Dremel tool. And then we have this, which is a Dremel tool with an installed flexible cable. So the actual tool end is right here. Um, it comes with a foot powered switch. So this regulates the on and off and the speed. Um, and then we have this base, which clamps on your table. And then you have these extensions. This makes it uh, middle section and then you have the top section and the top section has this which lets you hang the um, the tool on it uh, so that it is a vertical so this cable is hanging vertically next to you so you only have this in your hand while the tool is out of the way um, it also came with these uh, 
attachment devices, which is this is this is the the hanging part, um, as well as these little bits that came with it. As at uh, this guy who had this is an estate sale. He had like every conceivable Dremel adaption adapter you can imagine. Most of which I did not buy because I don't really need them. But as an example, this vice by itself is a sixty dollar or 50, 50 to 60 bucks, depends when you buy it. You buy it on Amazon at 60, I think you buy it from Zorro Tool, it's 50. And I got everything here, plus a, a number of hand tools that you've already seen, as well as the camera tool and the miscellany guide and uh, the cookbook for 30 bucks. So for less than, for half the cost of this, I got all of this stuff plus hand tools, as well as a hammer, which I've already given to someone because I bought the hammer for them particularly. They were looking for a small headed hammer they could use that wouldn't put too much strain on them because they are not overly strong. And I found a small ball peen that is just the tool that they need and it works perfectly for them. So again, I got a present as well as all this stuff for myself. So I'm really, really happy. Um, so I'm going to need to find a box for this that I can fit this in so that I can keep it here upstairs. I think this is really the best place for it is, in, is where I'll have access to it in the house. But that way both my wife and I can do use this because this makes using a Dremel tool really simple for someone who doesn't have as much experience and who doesn't want to have to be holding a vibrating tool like this. So if you're doing small controlled work and sometimes my wife does, you know, crafty things this is absolutely the tool that you are looking for and i didn't look up the price of this thing ma'am um this is the uh four four thousand and one xpr um with the the pedal and everything but again all of this for 30 bucks plus hand tools one of the best deals i've made in a long long time um, one of the things i couldn't fathom is that at that particular sale, this guy was a big woodworker and he had some really great gear. But in the back, he had his wood storage and no one was looking at it. Now, I don't do lots of woodworking, but this guy had boxes of exotic wood. Most of it was in the small side pieces, but if you did carving or knife making or even, you know, grips for pistols and stuff. This guy had just hundreds and hundreds of pieces of exotic wood and nobody was looking at it. I mean, I don't have a need for it, so I didn't buy it, but I'm like, just stunned me. I mean, these people, he and his wife were really into crafting. There was a kiln there at the house, a real kiln. Um, his wife, I guess, did glass melting. She made her own mosaic pieces and stuff. Um, they had, and, and they were fairly well off because there was an elevator that went from the basement to the first floor. Um, there was someone who had a mobility issue in the, in the house and they lived on the first floor where they had a bedroom. Um, so absolute, and they had, had a porch that had ramps and everything. They had really done a lot of nice job making the house uh, able to accommodate someone in a wheelchair or a power you know, scooter thing. I don't know what it was. But yeah, these people were heavy duty crafters and this guy was really into small scale modeling, I think it was, woodworking stuff, like building small things. And that's why he had all this gear. Um, and again, it was just an astounding setup. And so, yeah, this is just a great find um, for me. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna put these in. I'm gonna find myself a case someplace because I can get this into one box that will be good. This I can keep separately and this will be separately because this is a very useful tool to have around, um, particularly here in the house. So like small scale work you're gonna be doing here, like at the kitchen table and stuff. Just an awesome find. I am so damn happy with this. So yeah, this has been the latest bargain video. Thank you for being here. And I hope you'll be here for the next one. And if I remember, I will put links below so you can go to my Instagram where you will find weird stuff that I do not put in these videos. Um, because I don't buy them, they're not my thing, or they're too expensive, but I do find some weird and occasionally just flat out beautiful things out there in the world why I am out bargain hunting.